and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be perpetuating gender stereotypes by trying to explain what snooker is. Well, first of all, I'm going to be enjoying a delicious alcoholic ginger beer this evening. It's 9pm and I want to get frisky. <laughs> no, I don't. That's a lie. So first things first, I would like to remind everybody to please drink responsibly. I'm going to crack this open and like every non-alcoholic I have a bottle opener on my house keys because you never know when you're going to need a bottle opener. So the best thing to do is have one with you all of the time and that way you will always know where your bottle opener is and that is not, that's not an alcoholic thing to think. So I'm going to open this up. Oh my wrist is so weak. Oh I work in a bar. Bye. I am going to drink some of this and then I'm going to teach you about snooker so enjoy mm -hmm. oh it's so spicy oh, okay I am now going to start explaining to you what snooker is because everyone needs to know how to snooker I feel like I know enough I feel like I know enough to impart the knowledge onto everyone else so I've also brought some paper so I can use it as a diagram. You have a snooker table, right? It's got grass on it. This is roughly the shape of it. They tend to have straighter, more succinct edges made out of wood. And then they have a pocket on all sides. And then there's these middle pockets. These are called here, middle, middle pockets. Do they call them the top pocket and the bottom pocket? They might call it the top pocket and the bottom pocket. Ooh, interesting. This is where it gets a bit weird, sort of like get in your own lane sort of a thing. But it's sort of, it has a line up here with a semicircle and a dot in it, like a football pitch, but like higher. Do you know what I mean? Like, and then there's a, a dot here. And then there are all sorts of colored balls going around. So to place the balls, there's this, they use a triangle that goes in in here and then I think that I'm gonna say let's see how many you get to I'll say there's 10 I thought there was 11 balls but maybe I'm wrong so these ones in here are all, are all red One, two, four, five, and I think the black goes in the middle but I can't remember if that's right or not um, maybe I should color these in and these pockets have, um, depending on where you play your snooker if you're playing your snooker at like a professional level, um, then it's like it's got all of these pockets lead to these little runs that the balls come out of and they all lead to the same run. And if you pour and you're not in a competition, then it's literally like a basket underneath. It's like a... and then it's like tied at the bottom. So like if you put all of the balls in one pocket, they'd be overflowing out of the pocket because it's not designed to hold all of them okay i'm gonna color these in pink i'm just gonna draw that in without an outline so i'm gonna put pink there i don't have brown so i'm gonna use this gray so i'm gonna put brown over here oh, lovely. i'm gonna have blue next i feel like this is a good a good thing mm -hmm. and then green and then yellow that feels right to me there you go. And then the ball that I've put in here is just the white ball because there's another ball I forgot to mention and that is the white ball. So there you go. Just imagine that this is green. Just imagine that all this here is green. You, so basically in a tournament there is a number of people. In this example there's four people. Person one and person two play against each other and the person with the most scores, the most... <laughs> The more number of frames gets through, so let's say person one got through to the next frame, and then person three and person four will play each other, play against each other, and then whoever wins the most frames in that one will then go on and play against one. So let's say number three. So player one and player three play against each other and then whoever wins that is the winner. Obviously there's like world champions, 
And that's all that I know. Oh my god, it's like league, so it's like the quarter final, the semi final, the final. So it goes on for forever. I've met Pete Davidson, he seems alright. So, first person who wins. Um, did they flip a coin? I'm going to assume that they flip a coin. And whoever flipped the coin breaks. It's called breaking. When you hit the white ball and you smash it into all these other balls and they all scatter. And if you're really good at snooker, one of them will go into one of the holes and then you can continue potting balls. Now, the secret is that they don't let people know. They don't like, they don't advertise this, is that you have to start with potting a red ball. After you've pot a red ball, you can pot any other colour as long as you pot a red ball in between those colours. It doesn't matter what order you do it at this stage, take heed. All of the, all of the balls have different points. Now, I don't know how many points all of the balls are, so I'm going to assume. So, uh, um, I think a red ball is one point. Um, yellow, green, blue and brown are all two points. Then your pink is three points and your black is five points. What people tend to do when they're really good at the snooker is they will put, they will pot a red and then they'll pot a black and then they'll pot a red and then they'll plot, plot a pot a black and then they'll do a red and then they'll pot the black every time but every time the black gets pot the the man with the white gloves he's not a commentator with the referee I don't is that what it, groundsman he comes and he cleans the ball with his little white gloves and then he puts it back in the spot and then every time any of these colours get pot he cleans them with his little gloves and then puts them back in their designated house area if you can't always pot the black after the red they will try and go for the pink if they can't go for the black and if they can't go for the pink then they'll go for the others and then go a red and then try and pot one of these guys because they want the most points when you knock all of the balls everywhere that's called breaking so if you then win loads of points doing it mr greenleaf has broke with the points of 101 and everyone's like oh my god there's so many points now there's a foul and a miss you have to touch a red ball right I didn't make the rules when you oh and you're doing this with a cue uh, there's a stick basically you hit them all with a stick you hit all the balls with a stick and the stick looks like this and then so it's like that and then it's got like a little bobble on the end of it and then sometimes it has like mm, like patterns and then it's black it sort of looks like a magic wand but just bear with me and then it goes into a smaller stick like that and so you you hit all of the balls with this end and on this end there's like a smooth bit that you put chalk on um, and the chalk is like a little square little hole like mm, like a rivet in the middle where that end can sort of go it's usually like a weird green color um, and that's one of the reasons why the man with the white gloves wipes the balls at any point any point during the game, if you're the one whose turn it is, you can say to the man with the white gloves, hey, can you wipe this white ball, please? Because if you get a build-up of chalk on the ball, then it doesn't roll right. It can go off in a weird direction. I'm so good at this. <laughs> if you hit, if you don't hit a red ball and you hit one of the other balls, it's a foul. You're not allowed to do that you have to at least hit one of the red balls um, and one of the tactics that is used in, in snookers is if you um, position the white ball somewhere where it can't it, no matter where it goes it's going to hit a different colored ball it won't hit the red ball no matter where which direction you put it in that's called snookering someone 
because they can't do anything. They can either hit nothing or they can hit a coloured ball and you're not allowed to do it. So that's a really good tactic that people use. It's, it's, like, it's like a proper known tactic, like that's why people do it. Um, and then um, there's a kiss, it's called a kiss, where um, your white ball just touches another ball before it hits the red. Um, oh no, so if you just miss, you just miss your go, don't you? Because they, sometimes um, if you hit like a black, the black ball before you hit a red ball, they'll go foul and a miss. While you're, while you're using your cue to hit the balls, you cannot hit, sorry, you cannot touch with your body, your clothes or your cue, any other balls on the table, because if you do that, you're in trouble boy or girl or any other gender on the spectrum between boy and girl including non-binary so you want to avoid touching anything other than the white ball because if you do that then you are in big trouble so if you do any of these things if you foul also fouling would be potting the white ball because the white ball has to stay on the table <laughs> you're not allowed to hit the white ball and it go in a pocket because that means that the next person gets two goes so that means that they can um like hit hit the white ball and if it misses so it doesn't touch any balls then they can just get it into a better position to then hit a red and then hit a color if there is a foul in this manner and the ball goes down one of the pockets the person whose next go it is they can put the ball wherever they fucking want in this area here any fucking anywhere okay i think so yeah so once all of the red balls have been potted in any variation of potting that and then that and then that and then that you know whatever of the colors as long as they're potting all the reds first then comes the really tricky part you then have to pot all of these balls in order so take another look. Right, we've got yellow, green, blue, and brown, even though that's gray on here because I don't have brown in this box. You pop brown, green, blue, yellow, pink, and black. I've just numbered them because um, we're going to check the actual real life rules and then see how close I am. And then that's it, then that's snooker! And everyone goes, that's snooker! At the end. They don't. The audience isn't allowed to speak during any of this. You know, like, in football, everyone's like, Whoa, football, football, my team, my team's good, your team's not, hey, football, you, you. In snooker, no one's allowed to, it's a little bit like chess. You're not allowed to say anything. I remember watching a snooker, <laughs> really feigning interest in it when I was a kid. And, like, everyone, like, claps. Sometimes when something happens, like um, someone's trying not to foul and they accidentally like touch a coloured ball while they're trying to hit one of the red balls, everyone goes, <sighs> but that's as much as they're allowed to do. And sometimes when people are clapping, um, the referee man with the white gloves, he's like, uh, silence in the auditorium, please. And then everyone has to be quiet again. Um, but I was watching one with my family and it was Jimmy, Jimmy White, showing my age. Jimmy White was playing someone else, <laughs> I don't know. But there was a member of the audience who just kept going, Come on, Jimmy! Come on, Jimmy! Whenever Jimmy got up to, to do a score, he got forcibly removed by security because he was disrupting the match. So you've got to be aware of that when the first time you ever go to a snooker match without knowing anything about it you just need to just keep it up there i feel like i've explained that incredibly well i'm just going to put this out there i don't know how many of my friends who would like to have an alcoholic beverage with me i don't know how many of them actually like snooker so at this point i would like to ask everyone to like this video if you've liked it and to subscribe to this channel if you've enjoyed this little explanation my ted talk on snooker because i'm definitely qualified to talk about it and i would also like everyone to remember that this is for entertainment purposes only and i don't want to see any comments 
Oh Lord, please forgive me. I don't want to see any comments that are like, You don't know anything about snooker. Of course I don't know anything about snooker. I don't care about it. And I don't need to be schooled because I'm going to look it up now, alright? Okay, the maximum standard break is 147, so that's 27 more than I knew. Don't care about that ball play. <laughs> Okay, so did I get the order of the balls right? It's yellow, green, brown, blue, pink, and black. So, for everyone here, I'd like to say cheers, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe share if you want to don't be angry at me for not knowing sports it's not because i'm a woman it's because i don't care about it Go judge a book by its cover. let me know in the comments down below if you have any other sports that you'd like me to explain to you because i know that i am really doing a good service here just giving that information to everyone so everyone knows all the good things oh my eyebrows look awful why didn't you tell me? Okay, until next time, thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time. Mwah. Bye! Who's going to be stuck with you tonight? It's only a game show, but a big, big fight. I'm going to be stuck with you tonight. Do, 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 do. I'm going to be stuck with you, stuck with you tonight. Big break! Who was the man who was in that? Um, Davis. Dave. William Shatner. <laughs> oh, sick.